Hi. Right. Um, well, wesh bones and stuff, um, back from welding. Chris has done a lovely job as normal. Um, glad he managed to actually make some special time for me, so I've got to say thanks for that. I know the guy's super busy at the moment. <coughs> um, now the wishbones are on, just wanted to confirm the uh, track rod length. Uh, what do they call it in North America, but it's a tie rod, track rod, <coughs> either way around. And the final front push rods, uh, the rear push rods uh, are now also welded. Um, in virtual land, it was telling me it wanted a tie rod length of, with this particular pickup point, um, it wanted a virtual tie rod length of 339 millimetres. Um, now that length there is critical. Um, it's the, the ability to adjust that length to get the bump steer correct um, that really helps everything. Um, yes, I know you, you would normally adjust this to get your toe in, toe out. Super. But the problem with that is if you're adjusting that, you're adjusting that length, you're also adjusting the bump steer. You're moving the bump steer out. <coughs> so once I'm happy with what toe in and stuff that I want, I'll be adjusting the toe in here and pretty much have it reasonably close. A um, couple of millimetres toe in, probably tops. <coughs> um, millimetres being outside diameter of the wheel. Anyway, 339 virtually was telling me this. Um, so we tried it, put it all together. Um, the rack's now been modified, but previous before I didn't, uh, <coughs> the rack was too long, and basically I put this where it needed to be. So from the centre line axis of the central plane of the car to there, we needed uh, mm -hmm. uh, 388 millimetres according to the according to the computer. So we're looking at 388 from centre to there, and there to there we're looking at 339. <coughs> that was telling me that gave me the best zero bump steer that I could get. Um, <clears throat> obviously it was like 337, 338 point something, but near as damn it was 339, 388. <clears throat> so, um, back to the good old dead square bench again. Um, put a ruler, um, nailed the ruler to the wood here, did the same this side. Um, and basically gave yourself a nice square bolted some long extensions to I got some form of an idea on the hubs and you basically put the square up to the ruler and then it allows you a minor measurement there and on this it's uh, 10 mil and then if you move the ruler out to the board you get the general idea you know there 10 mil <coughs> obviously I can tie I can measure across these two just to make sure they're reasonably parallel. Um, but to be honest, it's, it, it's really a comparator. It doesn't really matter a huge amount if the, <coughs> if the steering angle of each wheel is a one or two degrees out. Actually, if five degrees out, it wouldn't, shouldn't matter a hill of beans. It shouldn't get bump steer. Um, as long as you've got the length of the bottom wishbone, top wishbone, the ratio on the rack, uh, uh, rack tie rod correct, you shouldn't still get any bump uh, steer within a reasonable amount. Okay, if you're going 60 millimeter or full lock, then yeah, I'm, there's probably going to be something. But <clears throat> within the normal driving or high speed driving, you shouldn't really get anything that should alter the steering angle at all um, on a reasonable amount, the first three or four degrees. <clears throat> but we're parallel. We've got both these sticks parallel at the moment. <clears throat> Ride heights um, with 100 millimeter at the front of the splitter works out to be roughly uh, 100. And 115 millimetres basically uh, uh, to the base of the chassis, which is um, from the base of the chassis up to the centre here, it's 205 millimetres as near as down it. <coughs> so, right height, which they're both set out at the moment. This one's just courtesy of our couple of spaces. This one we have a right height bar in, um, basically nailed to that point, so that would be uh, full bump, full droop. Now, if we lower this down. Um, which I can easily do, it's not the normal way to do it, but I can just screw the push rod at this point, screw the push rod down. I've lowered this through, <coughs> I've set it up at ride height, come down 10, 20, 30, 40 mil, which is maximum droop. Uh, on this side, I've got nothing. I can't, I can't see any movement at all. On the other side, it's about a 
it, it's not quite half a millimetre, but it's, it's, it's maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.4, something like that. <coughs> On this side there, again, from ride height to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 um, millimetres in, um, <coughs> in bump. Uh, 60 being the max, but I can't see it ever getting close to 60 because 60 would be on the springs and on the bump stop on the shock. But you know, 50 to 60 mil of that, I'm getting on this. Yeah, I can I can hardly tell the difference, but to be honest, it's less than half a millimeter um, on the ruler. Uh, on this side, it's less than half a millimeter again. Uh, so realistically, toe change. Um, now we're looking at here. And there we're looking at 450 millimetres from the centre of the wheel out. The wheel is actually only 320 mil to the outside of the tyre. So, you know, I don't know, take roughly a third off. <coughs> um, nearest damn it, between the two wheels, um, there's going to be less than a one millimetre change between the two inside parts or to either side of the wheels. And that is just throwing it on with what the computer seems told me. So pretty much all the geometry looks like it's there now, thank God. So the virtual world <coughs> and the real world are now together. Um, obviously, while you're doing this adjustment up and down, you need to lock, lock the uh, steering rack. Little, little, you need to lock the steering rack. That'll <coughs> come up to itself. You know, a pair of mole grips on the rack and then got a G-clamp to stop the thing from moving. So basically I can kind of <coughs> waggle the rack around and it won't actually move out of position. But I did that side, the 339, I did the one side first, push rod and stuff, did the 339 on this. And it worked so well, I thought, well, shit, let's try it this side. Uh, 339 also worked as perfectly well. And that's a 339 measurement with a ruler between there and there on the bench before I put it on. <coughs> um, what I had to do, because <coughs> the rack was basically a design, uh, was, a, was a, the correct uh, Titan uh, length for a Stealth B6, because we've moved the wishbones and stuff, the input inboard, and we've everything else outboard, pretty much I've had to shave, uh, take the steering rack completely apart, put it in the lathe, and shave 15 millimeters off of both sides. So. I basically shortened the rack length by 30 millimetres. <coughs> um, I don't know what that kind of reason... I don't know, it was rod, it was rod ends. True, yeah, the Stealth B6 was rod ends at the end there. There wasn't a normal, a normal ball joint style rack. So. <coughs> so, yeah, that rack, that rack point to point now is 30 millimetres narrower than it was about an hour or so ago. <coughs> um, actually, one nice thing, once the steering rack's apart, I kind of realised that if I strip it all down and whack both the bearings out, I'm actually going to anodise that instead of painting it like I usually do. Sod it, or bloody anodise the damn thing. It won't look quite so nice because it's cast, but it, it's just one less thing to paint. Blah, blah, blah. <coughs> um, yes, the radiator is only held up with a piece of wood, but I've just been <coughs> toying with some filling parts. We altered the chassis slightly in this corner here, and the two bars don't meet up, so I'm just adding a little piece in there to... Uh, <coughs> to make for the mounting point. I removed the mounting points that were at the back here for the original radiator frame and I've chopped them out and basically so it allows you to push the radiator down and lower the angle. Um, <coughs> it's uh, the radiator itself, fantastically, is like I say 14 and a half inches. So we've got a good 14 inches of area space there. And here we have, oops, there you go, closer to 29 on the core. Um, it's 29 a, a smidge on the core. Basically, I can fit a pair of 13-inch uh, SPAL uh, high-performance fans. Uh, <coughs> run one, um, run one via a um, uh, <coughs> altering voltage setup. Not so much PWM, um, more actually giving it a slightly different voltage. Um, and drive that one on to more of a more of a uh, adjustable frequency or adjustable <coughs> speed, <coughs> uh, and use that as the primary, basically the primary fan. Uh, and anything over I don't know 90 degrees engine engine water temperature will start to ramp it up or ramp it down. And then use the secondary fan um, <coughs> if whatever reason this one gets up to 
uh, whatever, 98, 100 degrees, whatever, whatever the set point you will want, that one will bring in. So by the time this one here is at its theoretical max, so we've maxed the voltage out on this to get that to go in there. If the temperature still <coughs> requires more fan, we'll stick this one on. And the reason why I don't want to run both fans together is because, yes, they're like nearly 3,000 CFM a piece, and they should be well more than enough, even with the fact that we're going to put a, an air conditioning condenser in front of it. <coughs> and obviously together, um, free air would be like 6,000 CFM, restricted with the radiators. You're probably dropping it down to four, but... <coughs> um, the uh, fans themselves are 20 amps a piece. So, <clears throat> you know, 40 amp draws quite a lot. Um, add that to the water pump for another 10 amps. That's like 50 amps just to keep the engine cool. <clears throat> so, you can kind of see I'm going to try and save with that a little bit and not really use it. And once you're moving, you're not going to have it. But, you know, <clears throat> sitting in traffic, it's another reason why I want a damn good GM alternator that's, you know, good to 200 amps. So, anyway, <clears throat> there we go. Parts in, bump steer, fantastic. I'm basically really happy. Um, should have the car on the floor hopefully by the end of the week. Um, all the parts are in now basically. Uh, uh, these are now tacked in position as is the thing. These could be welded up but to be honest they can be done any time. And they're in compression anyway so it doesn't matter to sit on the floor. But I just want to get the car on the floor um, <coughs> and then hopefully we'll do another video then. Okay, speak to you soon.